good? Okay. This is the um, regular monthly Town of Woodbridge Board of Finance meeting. Tonight is Thursday, February 21st. Um, and the first item on the agenda is public comments. And when Bill Silverberg appears, we have public comments. Oh, Joe, Joe Deese, I thought you said he had a copy. Oh, I'm sorry, I apologize. Uh, good evening. My name is Bill Silverberg, 31 Jenick Lane, Woodbridge, Connecticut, and to Mr. Chairman and members of the Finance Committee. Uh, first of all, thank you for the opportunity to address this board. Uh, I want to thank Mr. Genovese up here for uh, assisting me in obtaining the data which I understand has been included or was supposed to have been included in your packet. <laughs> Such data referring to the grand list of the town of Woodbridge from 2009 through 2018. And I'll be referring to that later on in my uh, presentation here. Uh, what I wish to address is contained in the grand list data sheet that is in your front of you right now, I hope. Um, look at the far left column. It contains the physical years. And the third column contains the assessor's estimate of the market value of the taxable, not all property, but of the taxable real estate of the town of Woodbridge in each of those years. Over the past 10 years, the estimated market value of taxable real estate in this town has decreased $112 million. $112 million or approximately 6.4%. During the same period of time, the amount of taxes raised on the taxable property has increased 6.7 million dollars, or about 18%. So we've got a decreasing tax base of 112 million and an increasing tax on that. To me, these facts are extremely worrisome. <clears throat> Using as the numerator, the property tax is collected. And as the denominator, the uh, market value of the taxable property of the town, the taxes as a percentage of the estimated market value, not the assessed value, was 2.14% back in 2009. And it looks like it's going to be 2.81% for the present physical year. Or in the last 11 years, the percentage of tax on taxable property has risen 31%. That's right, Sandy. <laughs> Your eyebrows went up. Yeah. Okay, now, I know the, as well, as, almost as well as you do, the smoke and mirrors of how the budget is presented to the public. Monies are transferred from the general fund, something comes back from Amity, something is shifted over here, and something goes out there. But these are the true facts, and I ask anyone who wants to, have any problem with it, I do not claim it. I will give it back to Mr. Genovese to show you how we came to these numbers here. But these are the numbers. I'm aware that the economic climate within the state of Connecticut has deteriorated under multiple administrations and multiple legislatures. And although I'm hopeful, I personally don't see the proposed changes just announced in the state budget as resolving anything within the coming decade. If we in Woodbridge address our suburban problems, those of Woodbridge, on a local level in order to improve the livability of our community, involving taking stock of what our existing problems are, doing a comparative analysis, and in my opinion, a value-based prioritization. In other words, what value are we getting out of what we're putting our money into? 
setting out objectives and targets and identifying various measures to meet those objectives. Then at least on the local level, because I can't think beyond the local level. I can wonder about it, but I can only act on the local level. We have a chance to reverse what appears to me to be an incipient onward downward spiral of the quality of life within our town. And I want to stress to this board that what I'm talking about is value-based prioritization. Although the demographics of the town have, uh, have changed, these factors should not preclude the administrative leadership of, at the Board of Selectmen from identifying our problems, analyzing our problems, and setting out objectives and targets that can be handled on the local level within the confines of economic reality. As the board, regards the Board of Finance, and I try to couch these words a little bit here, I truly appreciate the amount of time the board spends analyzing the submitted budgets. But again, I see this as only one part and possibly only a small part of the board's total responsibility. I'm dating myself. Russ Stoddard once said, he was a former selectman here for people who haven't been around here, uh, when an individual gets on a board or commission in this town, he or she loses perspective of the town, of the total town and the town's wants and needs, and only sees the wants and needs, maybe not even the needs of a particular board they are serving on. They become very tunnel vision on what their particular board needs along the way. This board, this is the Board of uh, Finance, has a responsibility to the total citizenry of this town of Woodbridge. And I think it rec recognizes this, but that just in terms of the annual budget isn't enough but it must be seen in terms of helping the community decide which programs and which services are necessary and important and value-based. What do we value as a community? I don't care if you cut one more police car, you're adding one more teacher, that is not significant. We've got to take a total reassessment of our budget. What can we afford as a community? What are the needs? This board should lead by the power of controlling the money. The data presented earlier, in my, in my opinion, is damning. A decreasing market value in our community and a markedly increasing tax percentage as a percent of estimated value. I looked at the numbers for Bethany and Orange and separately at the town, shoreline towns of Brantford, Clinton, Guilford, and Madison. There's no, I just took those arbitrarily. My best estimate is the shoreline towns have taxes as a percentage of estimated market value approximately 20 to 25 percent less than Woodbridge. Big difference. Bethany and Orange between 5 and 10 percent. Please check my numbers because I can always be wrong. But if I am correct, then a house with $12,000 of the property taxes in Woodbridge would have a bill of approximately $2,500 to $3,000 less in one of the shoreline towns. That affects market value of a house. Property taxes affect real estate value. I believe that the high taxes relative to market value will continue to depress any growth in the estimated market value of real estate within this town. And therefore, in order to fund our town budget using the same processes we have followed for too long and for decades, we will require an increasing percentage of the estimated value further depressing the real estate market in our community. Some people hope that the country club will resolve things. No way. No way. It's a short-term little thing. It's a blip. It isn't the big thing that has to be looked at. Hopefully, the Board of Selectmen will address our complex suburban problems in order to improve the livability of our community. I'm getting to the end, by the way. <laughs> I don't claim to have the answer or answers, but I leave it imperative and strongly suggest that this board demand and implement the requirement that each board and commission feel some degree of discomfort with its proposed budget and that zero-based budgeting, a method of budgeting in which all expenses, each and every expense, must be justified for each annual presentation <clears throat> and in which the budgeting process starts from a zero base at every function within the organization and is analyzed for its needs and costs. And if it fulfills an important value, and if it, in, it fulfills an important value that the community can afford, then we budget for it. 
let's try to regain the quality of life and the cachet that made Woodbridge a wonderful town. The cachet has changed, by the way, folks. If you don't believe it, fine. Uh, you know, it's, it's different. Let's, and the cachet that made Woodbridge a wonderful town to reside in, a town that helped my family to prosper, and I thank every, this town very much for that, and a town which hopefully will prosper for many years to come. Thank you for your time. You've got a lot of important things to handle tonight. Thank you, Bill. You're welcome. Okay. Tony. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> monthly report? We haven't talked lately. <laughs> <laughs> financial report. Yeah, monthly financial report. Okay. The monthly re financial report through the end of January is a surplus of just over $800,000. So um, that would mean that our fund balance would, would increase about $400,000 uh, to just under $6.2 million or 12.4%. So it's up significantly from earlier in the year and you'll f find out why. Um, in interest income is a surplus generated uh, projection of 140,000 as is uh, intergovernmental revenue. Is also a, uh, in a surplus of one hundred and forty thousand uh, dollars. Charge for services will have a shortfall of about uh, ninety three thousand dollars, mainly due to the closure of the pool, which is the uh, eighty three thousand dollars in receipts that we will not receive. Uh, the big change here is the uh, Amity surplus, which is um, generates a surplus in the um, other revenue section of seven hundred sixty five thousand. Um, just so you're so you can follow this. The surplus was $981,000, but I've um, earmarked in this projection to $220,000 for next year's budget, assuming that that will continue. Um, so that drops it to seven sixty-five. Uh, on the second page at the bottom, I did a little um, s summary so you can see the summary of the surpluses and the deficits and how they come to the 811. Um, Finance department has a surplus of about $40,000. We've talked about some of these in the past in the library. $15,000 due to elimination of positions. Uh, waste management will have a, a deficit of about $20,000. Might be actually higher than that uh, as recycling charges continue to rise. When um, this was done, we used to uh, receive $16 a ton. Uh, we're now paying about $35 a ton. And it could go up even more to about 50, 53, I think, is the um, where the spot is. And it's mainly because the recyclables have become, um, um, they're not as valuable. And, it's, and it costs more, believe it or not, it costs more to, um, to separate the recyclables than it does for solid waste, which we pay $61 a ton. So it's actually going to be, I think, going to become more to, Costs us more to get rid of recyclable materials than it will just to burn it. So single stream yeah, is not awful. working? No, it's, it's just, not. It's, it's contaminating the, the glass, is contaminating the broken glass, is contaminating the cardboard and the plastic. But I remember when we kind of switched over to that. Now, yeah, is that it's the single stream that caused right. the, is a big part of it, yes. Is, that, is there a way for us to... See, the state requires, that's the state issue, so the state has to... So is there something that we can do? We're to they're currently working on um, separating the glass, believe it or not, I think is the one big piece that mm -hmm. I think could help. So separating the glass meaning we'll have separate places for the people, the residents to come. To bring their glass. And separate them out themselves as opposed right. to the way we do it now is just throw everything right. in there. Right, correct. I and you said the state's headed. working on a remedy? Now, uh, yeah, but I'm not sure. I don't have the details on it, but that's, that's where a lot of the regulation comes from. It's so would it save us money if we did it ourselves? That's what we're looking into to see if we... So sorry, Tony, are you saying that the state requires single stream? Yeah, recycles, requires us to recycle and has do all the requirements of recycling, yes. Now, is it a requirement to single stream? I'm not 100% sure. I mean, I, just, I understand that they require some recycling, but yeah. I wonder whether we could... We probably should look into whether or not it's... Yeah, we're um, doing... We are actively doing research on that, and we're um, working on our ordinance for that, and... And a couple other things, so we'll have some more information as we progress. So you said we we pay eighteen. We used to we used to pay, receive sixteen dollars a ton for recycling. Recycling, so it was actually a revenue stream for that. Now um, we were paying twenty five dollars a ton. It's gone up to about thirty five last month. 
the spot market, which is if you bring it in off the street, uh, boy, I think it's in the 60s. Wow. So did I hear you correctly? You're saying you're, you're we, projecting that, that we'll end up paying more correct. for recycling. That's than correct. We were for right. Because you need, there's people, right. there's labor to separate them. Right. Yeah. And, um, so, so. I mean, we used to separate everything ourselves. Right. Right. And we had yeah. different, you know, bins right. for glass. Yeah. Right. You know, newspaper. metal, yeah. Yeah. newspapers, yeah. 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 Right. corrugated right. cardboard. Yeah. And My wife still does it. And when the gentleman picks it up, he's, you're wasting your time, lady. <laughs> <laughs> Everything goes in one bin. But my wife, she's you know, she's used to doing it that way. She does it. So, yeah. but it may be possible, right? Because there's some some recycling that are more valuable to to potentially go back to. So, to, if you look on, it's actually online. Uh, if you look the commodity, it's like a commodity price for cardboard, for glass, for um, all the different components, mm -hmm. and it creates. They call it an ACR, I think, is what it's called, and. Um, so that's like the commodity price that the recycling is worth. You can actually so um, follow, follow that price. What do they, I mean, so to, like glass used to be recycled by itself, newspapers, it's all just dumped in together. And then it's place. separated at the at a well, They plant. separate. Yeah. 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 So it's supposed to be automated, the separate, or most of it with blowers and magnets and all stuff. But I guess the glass was ca is causing a problem. Okay. Something else too. I think it was bottle caps. I don't know. There's right, some, there's, yeah. um, yeah. right. You're supposed to leave the bottle thing. caps on, and no one knows that because that's right. clogging that clean the clean bottle roller caps. machine. You're right, right. I remember right. Uh, Rob Klee told us yep. about that. At oh, right, yeah, right. I, went yeah. To. I thought it was the other way around. Right. You're actually supposed to take the bottle caps off and throw them out in regular trash. Yes. Yes. Could be. Yeah, yes. that could be. Oh well, he yes. said just leave them on. Well, not not if it's on glass. You can't. The the, the whole point is that you can't okay. have different materials attached to each other. So, so the, plastic, and I was plastic, about plastic is bottles. So this yes. is in fact one of the problems. Yeah. When you when you go when you're driving, everybody knows what a stop sign is. But yeah. if you ask everybody in here how to recycle, they'll yeah. have a different answer. Right. Right. I thought I was trying to do the right thing. So. Yeah. <laughs> you're better off throwing those out. Yeah, completely. Yeah. Even though they're on plastic bottles. Yeah. Yeah. As, as long, you can put a plastic top on a plastic yeah. bottle. Right. You can't put a metal top on a, on a on glass, glass container. Bottle. Right. Or a um, plastic container. And they I actually, I separate. actually heard it was. I, I heard that the, the the plastic lids on a plastic bottle are different plastic. So if they're on there, <laughs> you can't do it. And there's some. Really? And, I, and I and again, I don't. I can't. I mean, stuff <laughs> oh, we have wow. to look into. I heard that you were supposed yeah. to, in fact, cut off. You know the. You know, like on a. You know, like on a plastic, like a seltzer bottle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That if you leave the little collar on mm -hmm. oh really that contaminates oh when it you separate the yeah the, so i don't know i mean the, the ring yeah so you take off the yeah. top and you leave wow. the ring on and that contaminates it really and all of this has become the issue because china stopped taking exactly. it right. yeah. Yeah. that's right yeah. yeah so things to look forward to okay, okay what else Tony? okay <laughs> um Boy. we have a let's see a couple other items here the um closure in the pool that actually generates a surplus in expenditures about forty six thousand dollars can I ask uh, about that? Sure. So the pool ran at a deficit last year, right. a fairly significant deficit. Right. So we were losing. Yeah, the net what, is about We're 36. losing a lot more in revenue than we're picking yeah. up on expenses. Correct. Like, I would have expected it to be flipped. <clears throat> is that like the timing of when the. Correct. The yeah, a lot of it's the paid. timing of the fees and stuff, right? <laughs> the expenses are spread across the whole summer. Right. So some in June, which is one fiscal year. And yeah, that's right. right. And um, most of it, and then you have uh, four or five, six weeks in, um, four, four, six, ten weeks is more in the um, later year. But yeah, it's the timing of the revenues and expenditures. Because the, the revenue is front loaded, yeah. but the expenses are, okay. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and um, the Woodbridge Board of Education, the deficit was 251000 through December. So if and, you net all that, it's 811. And growing. Good. <clears throat> I don't know. Okay. Okay. Stop at that. Sandy will cover Woodbridge Board of Ed Financial. But as Tony said, their deficit is up to a quarter of a million dollars. Um, March 7th, was that two weeks from tonight? Mm -hmm. Yes. The, we'll be uh, doing our budget recommendations, so 
Take a one. When are you when are you guys getting together, Beth? We did. You did. Oh, you did. Yeah, you'll get a you'll get a Tuesday. Short you met the other night, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. So we're going to get something ahead of our meeting, correct? Yeah. correct. Yes. Yeah. Their recommendations. Well, we recommended to you guys. <clears throat> okay. Jerry's right. weren't working on. Jerry just putting it together. You okay. Have it. And Karen, I guess, is doing some yep. of it as well. So. I'm on the Six. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Funding requests. I believe we have three. And they're all kind of automatic, but let's go over them. Land item transfer 18-19-11 is a $10,000 transfer within public works for dead and drying trees due to the borer ash or emerald ash or something ash, like that. The ash borer. Ash borer. So I'll move acceptance of line item transfer 18-19-11 in the amount of $10,000. A second. Any discussion on this? Yeah, actually I do. Um, so have they identified the trees? And I'm just curious because I know that the different park associations have been eliminating trees on their properties mm -hmm. and cutting down trees in areas where there would be a, uh, a danger to the, to the hiking public, so to speak. Walking along trails, I think the trees that are in the middle of the forest, the woods area, are not, uh, are, haven't, weren't cut down. I mean, obviously, because they're not along a trail area and they're not a danger to any people. So I was just curious where. These are mostly along the um, towns right away or the town. So along the roads, the, the roads yeah. and right away? Yeah. Okay, because I think at some point, all of them. Are going to have to come down because I don't think there's anything. From what I understand, the the the, the treatments are almost cost are not cost effective. It's very expensive, and there's not even a, a guarantee we that, tried that, at my that it'll work. And it didn't work. We ended up having we just made it. It didn't make a difference at all. Okay, so they've done an assessment of all the roads in town and determined. And he, yeah, and he, mm -hmm. if it's someone identified, and he makes more will make a determination as to the the nature of the tree and how severe it is, and if it needs to be taken down right away, or if it's something that can. You know, he can wait until, because right. he's sort of out of money, almost out of money this year. So he'd have to wait until Ju July to mm -hmm. start again. Because at some point, the law, I think the law, they're all going to have to come down. Because they will all come down from the disease. Mm -hmm. Right. There's a lot, there are some that are being taken down because the utility is doing right. some so that work. Helps. So that's help, that helps. Yeah. Okay. Might Maybe. be good to identify those for the companies that are <clears throat> doing that work. Yeah. Any other comments? All those in favor? Aye. Next is, uh, again, this is just a, uh, a transfer of funds from a FEMA award uh, for the, to aid with brush removal from the storm of uh, January 19th. Right. So I will move acceptance of line item transfer 1819-12 in the amount of 22160 and this will be covered by a FEMA award, Tom? Right. Okay. Second. Any, uh, anything on this? Yeah, just one question. So have we applied for relief or have we just... We're, we're receiving a FEMA award. Basically what happens is the town is reimbursed for expenditures that we, um, we, uh, we spent back in last May, I think. Well, we had the microburst in there. Right. Yeah. So we're reimbursed for those that, those funds, right. which means essentially, and it was some in, the, in uh, June or July. So essentially, this is revenue that we now have an appropriation that we can spend for something else. Okay, because I thought I read that it was yeah, it's potential. Not from this it's not from this storm. It's not from this storm. We okay. just have we have that, the funds that were reimbursed for a previous expense. Okay, so we, would we leaves. apply for something for this? Uh, I'm not sure. The, there, the I'm not sure time? yet if there's been a an okay. award or not. That was all. Yeah. Anything else? All those in favor? Aye. Okay. And finally, I think Sean had told us about this that he did. Yeah. He had a generator that was a problem, yeah. so I guess it finally uh, <clears throat> kicked the bucket. So um, this is a fifty-two hundred dollar transfer within within the fire department hose line to replace a generator on the whatever the heat trailer is. I came up with a good selection. What is it? I believe it's the trailer that they have uh, the uh, that we got from the 9/11 funds way back. That's correct, okay. right? Yep. Yeah. 
that okay. has provides heat on the scene, right? If you need, right. Uh, yeah. Okay. If it's cold. Yeah. All like, so okay. the guys for warm up would use well, not just us, but other things that need to be kept. Oh, warm. Oh, need to be kept warm. Okay. Yeah. All right. We kind of deduced it, but we didn't really know. Could be right if they. I'm not in the fire service. There. I couldn't answer it. Okay, so I'll move the acceptance of line item transfer 1819-13 in the amount of 5200 Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Well, I did have another. Oh. Um, Scott will be here on the March 7th meeting to review the audit. Oh, okay. Okay. At the, uh, okay. At the budget meeting. All right. Next is uh, approval of minutes. We have before us the uh, minutes of the... Monthly meeting January 17th, 2019. I will move acceptance of the minutes of January 17th, 2019 as presented. Second. Any corrections, adjustments, suggestions, anything? No. Nope. Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Beth? Thank you. Um, I'm just going to jump over. Mike, can you hear me okay, guys? Okay. Um, just a few things that I reported at the Board of Selectmen meeting. Um, I met with State Senator James Maroney, uh, George Logan, and Themis Clarities with Tony and uh, a couple other folks to discuss the latest legislative initiatives. You remember we talked about at the budget meeting the cost for legal ads, for example. That's one of the things we're following now. And as soon as that legislation comes up, I'm going to go there and speak publicly about why they have to do something about that. Um, bills regarding the car tax and property tax reform and the bills regarding school consolidation so i'll keep the board of selectmen informed as well as you guys and let you know um, i also had a meeting with Derry gorski and jim zioli to meet with them about proposed bills and stay in, we're going to stay in touch with each other about school consolidation so you know if it's just something that we can do I'm, i am going to i think that i just found out march 1st is the first time i can go testify so i will um, the Country Club Property Constructability Review was um, distributed that evening, and um, we plan to discuss it at the March meeting. If anyone of, anyone of you would like a copy, I'd be happy to send it out to you guys as well. Um, that was really the first draft, and the, the, I invited the board members to review it. And we're going to have the engineer and Terry Gilbertson and Chris Sullivan, who put it together, come to the March meeting. So you guys are welcome to sit in the audience and hear about that. Um, let's see, um, then we got our final report from CERC, which I think Sheila sent you guys yes, yesterday. Yes, okay. And, um, that's pretty much it. So any questions? Anything? Okay. Okay. Thank Thanks. You. Liaison reports. Um, I was unable to make the Amity meeting, but there was not much going on and, uh, they're continuing to look to tweak their budget a little bit. So I'll keep you posted as I find out. Paul, you have anything? Um, yeah, um, the uh, February Police Commission meeting was uh, canceled because of a storm, but um, the January 8th uh, meeting, we had Mike, uh, um, Officer Mike Massapetri, yeah, uh, sworn in, um, with a name like Kiriakos, you know, I really have <laughs> but, but, um, well, the Italian names are <laughs> <laughs> um, we now have uh, 24 officers with uh, one vacancy because Officer Prentice retired recently. Oh gosh, I'm sorry. Um, the OSU over time at that time, we were over by 123%. Uh, the ISU, I'm sorry, uh, partly because of the homicide and, and other things. Um, the IT transition to Amity support is, is going well. They're working out a few issues here and there, but <coughs> overall, we're, we're doing pretty good. Um, we've had the new radio consoles installed. They're working. Uh, the dispatch folks are trained on it, and um, they're doing pretty well. Um, February 11th, we had the um, uh, EMS Commission meeting. Um, uh, so... Uh, over on EMS, um, AMR uh, this year has um, reworked where they position the car, uh, particularly when they get calls from outside the town or when they have a current call and so on. And by uh, working that, uh, they've improved their numbers uh, on priority one calls and priority two calls, actually. 
Um, so the tail end of last year, they were missing here and there, not by very much, but they've really improved their numbers these last couple of months. Uh, they've taken over the pre-arrival instructions when people call 911, and that seems to be working very well. Pre-arrival instructions is if you call 911, uh, somebody having some issue, um, the person on the phone will instruct whoever called to do certain things before help arrives. And AMR has taken that over. They've had a long history of doing this. They're very well adept at doing this. So it seems to be working well, as reported by both the police department and by AMR. And uh, I think that's all. Okay. Tom? So just a question, how do they do that? Do they transfer the caller to an AMR? Right. right. They call, they transfer they, they seamlessly. Patch they patch the them call? in seamlessly, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I was unable to make the last uh, Human Services Committee meeting, but I can tell you that they were working on the job yesterday. There was a structure fire in Woodbridge, and the family was... Uh, outplaced because they were they'll be unable to live in the house for quite some time and Jeanette showed up uh, representing human services to talk with them about potential housing and uh, other needs they will have in the process of contacting the insurance company and getting that house taken care of and all that so they were out there making sure that the the residents were taken care of as far as where they're going to stay and and their needs so just one of the many things they do. Chris, Tom? Um, and Beth, correct me if I get it wrong, but the, <laughs> the fire commission met. Um, it was a pretty straightforward meeting. I mean, I think they again emphasized at the meeting the increase in calls and and the amount of, of services that they are providing. Um, we talked a little bit about, again, the budget and some of the justifications. And I think they were emphasized in particular some of the maintenance pieces that seem to be, I don't know if we call it under budget, but but always needing, you know, always going over despite their attempts. And for me, it was eye-opening just how much. It's, it's related to apparatus. Apparatus. Because it's, it, yeah. wasn't, it was getting better because we're beginning to replace vehicles, but it's, uh, that that's pretty much right. Right, yeah. yeah it's, where it's just sort of the routine yeah. maintenance on, on the yeah. vehicles that yeah. are surprisingly expensive and just need to be done. Um, I think, I don't, I don't think anything else really no, that we either. talked about, but. Okay, Andy? Uh, yep, the last recreation meeting was January 28th. There's not a whole lot to report, mostly just kind of regular business. Um, they went through all the field requests for the spring and summer, so all the baseball and soccer, softball, lacrosse, I think. Um, just making sure there weren't conflicts, that sort of a thing. Um, they're also going to put out a new anti-bullying policy for the rec summer camp. I guess some other towns have uh, something official out there, so they're uh, writing something up, and we're going to review it at the next meeting. I actually called Johnny A yesterday, and I okay. asked him, has Jerry Weiner seen it? And I guess the mm -hmm. commission's going to get it for, at their next meeting, and then it'll go to Jerry Weiner, you know, yes. town council. So mm -hmm. just for review, I, I just want to make sure he sees it before it goes out as an actual Makes policy. Sense. So yep. Johnny said, that was our plan. So if that comes up, the other, he, he will be okay. looking at it after you guys see it. Thanks. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Just no, that's okay. Clarification. <laughs> um, so I went to the library commission meeting on February 11th, and um, I want to encourage everybody to go to the mini golf. Um, it is the, yeah March 8th and 9th, and 9th is uh, Saturday, and that's really for all the families. So Here it's really a fun time. Yeah. <laughs> the adult um, night. Also, the, um, the Friends are back up to contributing about $12,000 um, two times a year now. Um, it hasn't been that high for many years, so they have really resurfaced as an important contribution to our library operation. Um, also, Canopy, which actually streams movies, um, is going to be a new, or is actually, um, a new um, subscription that's available through the library now. And um, there potentially may be a limit on the number of movies that you can stream per month because they're anticipating a lot of usage. And it costs per movie stream. And there's no charge to um, you know, town residents. Um, but it will be very popular, I think, which is very nice. Um, 
The other change they're going to make is right now there's a coin box for the public photocopier and they are having lots of problems with that. So they are actually going to remove it um, and, and basically trust the patrons to come to the desk to pay um, for what they use. Um, they do that now actually for faxing and they'll do it for photocopying. They're going to try it for two months. They'll see how it goes. So, um, and then the Board of Ed um, for Beecher um, did not meet in January um, due to the storm. Um, but as Matt indicated, the deficit is now up to 251000 for the first six months. This is through December. And um, that is due to um, special education expenses. Um, the deficit for special ed went from 99000 to 146000 um, due to transportation of outplaced students um, changing and some other programmatic changes within um, special ed at the school. Um, the um, 129 of that 251 relates to the building issues. So what happened in the summer in terms of cleaning up the humidity, the pool, the Van Zelm study. Um, and 50000 is from um, the 50000 that we reduced their budget last year. Uh, the Van Zelm um, report, they feel that they will have to spend about $140,000 um, between this year and next year um, to fix the issues. And I guess apparently, Tony, they met with you, or mm -hmm. you know the um, yes. division of yep. that and what they're planning on doing. Yeah, correct. And um, they're concerned about their budget request for next year and what will happen to that. Um, and that's the story. Okay. We'll find out two weeks from tonight. Yep. I don't know what the Board of Selectmen doing. I'm going to find out. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll make a motion we adjourn. Second. Unless there's anything else? Anybody else? Mm -hmm. no? Okay, we have a first. Yeah, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Please do your best to get here in two weeks. It's an important meeting. <laughs>